Hi, it's Dan Welker with another BUSA 208 video. This time we're talking about the second kind of ANOVA or analysis of variance. And again, we're using our same Spa Cha Cha social media marketing campaign to uh, generate the data. Let's look at this middle block of data right here. And we will see that our data looks a little bit different than what we had in our first uh, ANOVA that we did, which was a single factor test. Notice here that I have both three different pipe price points and four different locations. So the question begs, what was the source of the variance in my data? Did the variance get created because of different prices? Or was the variance due to changes in location? Or all of the above, meaning yes, price mattered, and yes, location mattered. If you look right below, <clears throat> right below the data block, you'll see that we have the same initial null hypothesis as we did for the single factor test that the mu or number of responders per cell is the same for all price points, with the alternative being that they are not all the same. The addition here is that we now have a second hypothesis to test that while simultaneously testing for impact of price point, we can also test for the impact of the four different locations, Austin, Boise, Cupertino, and Denver. We will do that by selecting our data like that, going to data, data analysis, and opening this option here, ANOVA, two-factor without replication. Without replication here means that there is simply one data point for each price location combination. I'll click on OK. There is my data. It's got that figured out. And yes, there are labels, both row and column labels, and I have selected my alpha uh, again before collecting the data to be a value of 0.05. I'm going to put the output on a new worksheet and click OK. So here's my new worksheet. Let us do a little bit of formatting here to make it a little bit more easily read. There and there and there. Some commas in these numbers. They're just begging for it, I can tell. And we're done. Okay, so in this top block, I have two sets of information. The first set is location information. Here you can see that I had three, 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 and three observations for each of the four locations. Here are their averages, and here are the variances associated with those averages. Now, <clears throat> Excel gives us a variance, which is a little hard to interpret because the units there would be, in this case, respondents squared. Not really sure what a respondent squared is, but I know that if I type standard D right there, that I will be able to then say equals square root of the variance, and that will give me the average amount by which the data varied from the mean or the standard deviation. Copy that down formatted it a little bit, and you can see I now have the average and the standard deviation for each city. I also have that same, same information here, average, and now here, standard deviation for each price point. So let's review. On average, in Austin, we had 73 respondents with a standard deviation just over 21. For the lowest price point, $20, we had an average of 81 respondents with a standard deviation of 14. Some good summary data to be thinking about. Now let's look at our ANOVA table. This right here is the part that we look at first. Oh, look, my rows, now which one was my rows again? Oh, location. So let's type that in here just to be a little bit thorough. 
location, so columns must be price. Okay, so I've got a p-value of 0.03. That 0.03 is less than my alpha of 0.05, so I can reject the null hypothesis that all the row means, or location means, are the same, i.e., one of them, at least, is different. Now I can do the same for my columns, or my price points. Here, I have a calculated F of 19.53, a critical F of 5.14, so it's very clear to see that my calculated F would fall in the rejection region. That is why my p-value is so low. Again, that p-value is very low. It is lower than alpha. And I can, again, reject the null hypothesis that each price point, on average, has the same mean, statistically speaking, as the others. Let's go back and look at our prior analysis and see if that jives. So here, we were just testing prices. And look, we still rejected the hypothesis that the price points resulted in the same number of respondents. Now adding some additional information, even though our data changed, huh, we can still see that the same result is in place. Here, in the, uh, in the file that will be posted on Blackboard, you can see similar information from this, uh, a version I ran previously for location, the rows, P is less than alpha, so we reject the null hypothesis. Same for price, P is less than alpha, reject the null hypothesis. This is the two-way analysis of variance. Next up, we will have the two-way of an two-way analysis of variance with replication so we can see if price and location combine to have different effects as the combinations change.